Ebony Ma is coming to Marvel Strike Force in just a few short hours, and it is Monday. That means I am answering your questions from the mailbag. Lots of topics, including Ebony Ma, Ironheart, and a bunch others. Plus, Drew, the rumor guy, returning in this video, guys. So if you're ready for all that, you know what to do. Let's go smash it. Valley Flyer. What is up, Valley Maniacs? Valley Flying here. I am back. Welcome to the channel. I hope you had a great weekend. Hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying dry. It is very, very rainy here in Texas. So I hope you're getting much better weather where you are living. But it is Monday. It is time for the mailbag. I am answering your questions from the Discord server. And I want to thank everybody that left a question there. If you want your question potentially featured in an upcoming episode, make sure you are a member of the Discord channel or the Discord server and leave your question in the mailbag channel on the Discord. The link is down below. Also, after the questions, guys, Drew the Rumor Guy is making another appearance. What is he going to talk about? What is he going to share with us this week? We will have to find out. But without further ado, guys, let's get to your questions. Valley flying. Happy Memorial Day. Ah, I see what you did there, brother. Nice one. Good job. All right, next question. Dude, how do you have so many purple mats? I swear every new character you get is taken to 6664 in a heartbeat. Uh, that's just kind of what you get for playing for a long, long time. You ease up on certain bottlenecks like purple mats, and you start to get new bottlenecks like orange mats, things like that. So... Uh, yeah, it just it just comes from playing for a long, long time. It's been over two years at this point. Uh, next question. Launch player returning on a fresh account after a long absence, starting off on defenders with guardians on the back burner. I know the usual suggestions like as guardian sinister six, but do you have any strong standalone characters that you recommend having lots of fun with Deadpool currently? Uh, a couple characters, one that uh, was very that I used very, very early on and might be valuable to where you are at the game. Uh, starting off Yondu, not not a lot of uh, synergy as far as a team, but it's kind of a jack of all trades, pretty fun character, but doesn't really have a team. And that's kind of uh, where he falls off in the mid game and end game. But for a beginner player, I thought he was a very fun character. Uh, Mordo, Mordo's another very early character that you could have some fun with. Obviously, later on, you would want to put him on a supernatural team, but he has a lot of control that he offers the team. So those are the two characters that I can think of off the top of my head. But most of the characters I'm building nowadays uh, end up on teams, and I'm building them for specific teams, brother. Uh, next question. Good day from Sydney. With a lot of big characters being released through Blitz recently, do you think total collection power is more important than strongest team power? I already have a decent U7 team, and sh I should get full Black Order for Arena. So do you think I should concentrate on building all teams to a minimum power level, stay safe, and smash it? Again, this question comes up a lot. And the answer to this question comes up about, uh, uh, I guess the answer to this question uh, is kind of determined by what is the most important game mode for you. So Arena, uh, Ultimate 7, those are teams that you want a lot of strong team powers. Most like Blitz. Modes kind of like war. You want a lot of characters, a lot of total collection power. So it's going to be determined by what is important to you. But if you're starting to prioritize Blitz a little more, I would start to build more teams. Uh, next question. Do you still plan on making Dragon Champions videos? Uh, do you still play the game? I haven't played the game in a while. Very good game. Very good devs. But kind of lost interest in when I couldn't really make videos about it. You know, I used to make videos with Cubs fan Han. I think I made a video with Mobile Gamer. I maybe, maybe I haven't. But it was fun to make videos, and then there was nobody to make videos with anymore. But very good devs, very good game. If you like the kind of game, kind of like Marvel Strike Force, without a IP attached to it, uh, check it out. There's a link in the description, and it does support the channel. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't played it recently. All right, so here's kind of a follow-up question from last week. I'm not sure if you guys remember that the Symbiote Spider-Man milestones ended last week. There was an inbox message that it was supposed to end in a couple days, but it just ended. So this is a Reddit thread in response to that, and Cerebro actually responded on this one. Let's go check out what he said. And his response was, it didn't end early. The message was not accurate. Okay. Hey Valley, who do you recommend taking as a team for Ultron at about 1 million total collection power? So you're getting him way earlier than I did. So I'm not sure if I can answer this with any first-hand knowledge, but uh, it's, it's tough for Arena 
and rates without a lot of context, what you're trying to accomplish, what the rest of your roster look like. So I'm going to answer this in the context for Blitz. And for Blitz, basically what you want to do is keep him alive. So characters like Drax, Hand Sentry work very well. But uh, if you're looking for something specific, I think I would need to know a little bit more context. But basically, uh, in a nutshell, just keep Ultron alive with whatever characters you have. Let him get his bots off. Next question. What is up, brother? Recently played Red Dead Redemption. It was a masterpiece. Years and years in the making. $65 upon release. It puts the Mount Fox and charges of offers into the spotlight. It may have even broken my spending. Switched me back to free to play. Am I the only one thinks that in comparison to other video game formats, the mobile game industry is extremely expensive. Uh, yeah, they've always been very expensive. Uh, what you're getting in trade-off for these big polished games is some uh, is some games that get a lot more updates a lot more frequently. So, you know, Marvel Strike Force might not have as much polish as some other uh, games, but they, they get a lot of updates. You, it, for at least the games that I've played, I don't see a lot of updates in these uh, A A list games. But uh, with the mobile games, even with the non A list games, you're getting a lot of updates. So that's that's kind of what you're getting to trade off for. Uh, but yeah, mobile games can be very, very expensive if you're buying all these offers trying to unlock these characters because the prices are ridiculous. Uh, next game, what ha what's happening from Indie with love? What is up, brother? Uh, question, how much of a factor should pulling a red star, a high red star character determine direction? Over the last few months, I pulled a six red star Mystique, Iron Man, Loki. I'm a somewhat new 2.3 total collection power. My Asgardian power teams are no good. Should I build up these teams first or level up my characters that I have high red stars wanting to improve in Ultima 7 and Dark Dimension 2 if that matters? So I think at this point, at the 2.3 collection power, I think it's more important for you to round out your teams and build out teams. Uh, after, after a while, I think you can start putting a little more resource into these high red star characters. But the thing is, none of these characters on the same team. Mystique is probably going to be on Marauders slash Brotherhood. Iron Man is probably going to be on a Power Armor. Loki's on an Asgardian. So you're not really centralizing your power. Like if you had all of these characters on one team, I would say yes, definitely go build your Asgardians or Power Armor or something. But because they're all on three separate teams, I'm thinking you could kind of keep your roster kind of similar as far as collection power. Build them up for a mode like Blitz. And then once you're starting to worry about Ultima 7, Dark Dimension 2, then you can focus on specific characters. But uh, I, I may be wrong. I, you may you may be doing Ultima 7 now, but based on your collection power, I think you're a little bit off of that. Dark Dimension 2, you probably could get in there very soon, especially if someone unlocked uh, Ultron at 1 million collection power. So, uh, yeah, Ult Minerva, Starlet, very good for Dark Dimension 2, but I don't think those characters that you pulled are worth it enough at this point maybe in the future but at this point to really focus on just one team and building around those characters next question hey valley any news on when the new milestone character shards will change from hulk to the new reward shards or whoever they may be i have not heard word on any of this i think i heard something a while back but have not heard a thing about this recently brother uh valley how's the smashing going how are you i'm currently stuck waiting for orange unique gears to appear in the supply store looking to build up a team on the side not sh sure which one wakandans fantastic four mercs thanks and have a smashing day so you listed all their benefits here for so wakandans chaos theory fantastic four uh war offense invisible woman we to have her up mercs war defense and so obviously the answer is going to be based on what mode you value the most if it were me though uh, I probably would do Wakandans. Uh, I don't place a lot of value on war defense. My Fantastic Four is already pretty good and they could beat a lot of teams. But if I didn't have them built up, that probably would be a little higher for me than Wakandans. But uh, I'm going to go Wakandans because I think uh, getting those red stars, getting those silver promotion credits are very important. I think it's going to be a little easy in the beginning. But if it was me, I would probably be doing Wakandans with that. But all of these teams are going to have different benefits and what would be valuable for you may not be what's valuable for me. So it's going to be determined what you think is better. The chaos theory, war offense, war defense, or whatever game mode, brother. Next question. How's it going from North Carolina? Been saving up a lot of orbs in case we have an orb opening event. Do you know if there's one coming up? I do not know if there's one coming up. Also, do you think it's wise to hold orbs or just to use them when you get them? I've always said, if you need the orbs, like a gold orb, like maybe a premium one day or a red star or, or some of these gear orbs, open it. But if you don't, maybe you don't need the premium. Maybe it's a training gear orb. Maybe it's an ultimate orb or something. 
or like a blitz orb and you already have all the characters, then hold it. But yeah, I've, uh, if you need it, open it. If you don't need it, wait for a while. I don't know when it's coming up. I'm thinking there's going to be one coming up at some point, but it could be a few weeks from now. It could be a few months from now. So yeah, if, if you need any orbs, open them. Don't, don't save them. Next question is greeting from Ohio. What is up, brother? About to get my first mega orb on my fresh account. In your opinion, what would be the best or most impactful character to get out of a mega on a brand new account? Love the video so much. So uh, I thought it would be Minerva, but I didn't see her in the mega orb. So I'm going to say Hella. I think Hella would be very valuable to a new player, especially because you can't really farm her node to yet later on in the game. So I'm going to say Hella for a new player right now. Uh, Valley Hope, you and your family are doing well. Love the content. If you could tweak one character, who would you choose? Who would you change? And uh, what would you make up? So it would, it would probably be the Hulk. I know he doesn't really fit into a team. And I don't like characters that don't fit into teams. But he is the Hulk. So he has a special place in my heart. Now, one thing I wanted to see was to make him scary. And he's, he's a little more scary than he was before his first rework. And uh, But I would like to see some charges on him. You know, one thing that I called for way back in the day before he got his rework, make him scary. Get, put him charged. Every time he gets hit, he gets a charge. And then after, when it's his turn to attack, then do have him do some damage, a lot more damage based on the amount of charges he had. That kind of goes thematically with uh, what he does. Kind of, they kind of did that with his kit, going below 50% and 25% health. But uh, yeah, make, make the damage even more and make it based on charges. What is up, brother? Coming from Cali. Two questions. They did a rework for Hulk. If they did a rework, do you think it'd be super easy to uh, just add a passive Hulk uh, slap, a sonic clap, like how they did with uh, Thor's passive works with building up charges? Yeah, so kind of what I was suggesting, but slightly different, uh, just because what I was suggesting would be based on uh, just his normal kit, but Thor's kit is automatic with the AoEs. Either of them I would like, though. I, I like that he's scary every time you hit him, so having the charges would work good. And second uh, question... I think it would be cool in War if they made it so you could chat between teams, kind of like Smack Dot, keeping it PG-13. You know, interesting thing, I think all the adults do keep it PG-13. I think it's the younger kids that uh, get it to that R-rated level, which I think is interesting. Obviously, no data on that, but that's just what I think. And uh, and some of the alliances that I've been in the past, adults, but they don't really go uh, off the rails with their stuff. So uh, as far as uh, chatting and smack talking, I'm not a big fan of that, but I know people are. So I'm sure in some situations it could be very beneficial, but could be very, very bad in others. So I, I don't know if I would like that coming to the game. What's up, brother? Love your videos. I watch all of them, but I'm uninterested in a live stream. Is there a way to be not blasted three separate times whenever you do a live stream and still be notified when a new video is posted? So I'm thinking you're... Uh, talking about the discord so when i when i go live it goes up in the auto announcement so what you could do if you don't want to see that is just uh, set that to not notify you when i do uh go live on that but yeah anytime there's a new video and you still want to be notified that goes in the main channel on the discord so hopefully that helps you brother uh next question bring a big hello from pittsburgh pennsylvania Anyway, uh, think about this. A lot came to us in the game not knowing what to do. What if they would came up with some type of reward that would be a redo? Basically, it would allow you to remove a T4 from a player, perhaps someone you upgraded by mistake, don't really use them anymore, just one you wish you had back. I would be in favor of that. I, I know uh, people wanted that back in the day, and Fox Knicks pushed back on that. Uh, it could be around time to revisit this issue, though. So I would be in favor if they did that. Maybe make it kind of like a raid where you had just had it one per character. You could reset it once per character. After that, it would cost you a bunch of cores or something like that. But yeah, this, this kind of mechanic, I think, is good, especially for people that start off, don't know what they're doing. They learned a the game like, oh, man, I made a mistake. So I would be I would be happy if they did something like this. Happy Memorial Day. Odd considering what the day is. I know, I know. But I still hope you have a happy day, brother. Completely changing my question. You'll see that as edited. Enough noise being made about the Black Bolt glitch. I mean, daily I'm dealing with this passive freezing my game. This was something that I had a lot. Uh, there was like a week period. I think I had four or five crashes uh, because of Black Bolt. I'm not sure if it was uh, when he was doing his move, but it was whenever he was on the field. So haven't had that in about two weeks or so. I haven't had a crash in about two weeks. So uh, the customer service has been pretty good about uh, responding whenever I have a crash. But yeah, this this is something I think they're going to be working on, hopefully in the next uh, client that updates. As I've watched a couple PVPs versus OMG, he gets you in the draft. You end up not going with the damage dealer. You play the long game, which is great for raid, not so much for PVP. 
Yes, I know. We've had a conversation about it after our matches. So hopefully I will be drafting better in the future and uh, giving you guys more entertainment with my PvP and not losing as much. All right. Hey, Valley pulled seven red star for the legendary aim monstrosity. Is he worth maxing out? Was going to put him on Aimtron and replace him with Assaulter. So uh, I like aim monstrosity. Very good uh, seven red star character. Not the best that you could possibly pull, but not the worst either. And, and he's on a good team. So that makes it good. When I use Aimtron, though, I actually take aim monstrosity off and leave Assaulter in there. I put Assaulter next to Scientist Supreme and Graviton to give them more speed. Ultron is next to Graviton and security is all the way on the end. But Monstrosity hits very, very hard. But yeah, when I do run Aimtron, he is off the team, brother. Uh, next question. How much an advantage are we really losing if we don't replace Vision with Iron Fart on the power armor? Ooh. <laughs> Someone's not liking Riri. But you're losing a little bit. Uh, Iron Heart is kind of an upgraded version of Vision. So she does a lot of what Vision does and allows him to go, go on to another team. Uh, but what she does just a little better, I think her ultimate is just a little bit better than Vision's because instead of clearing the positive effects, which for most cases is very good on that power armor team, especially with Falcon coming, he's not going to clear that. He's going to put defense up on it. So Vision, uh, so Ironheart will add a little more power to that power armor team. But yeah, it's, it's, she does a lot of what he does just a little bit better. So you're not losing too much by not replacing him. Hello, greetings from the Netherlands. What is up, brother? Hope you're doing well. A couple questions. Do you know how Ironheart will be released? So it was data mined a few weeks ago. She'll be a Blitz release character. Uh, take it for what it's worth. A lot of these Blitzes have been pretty accurate, but not 100 cents. So probably a Blitz release character. And I'm thinking it's going to be next week. This week, we probably have another. Well, we do have another Call of City and Blitz. So I'm thinking it's going to be next following week. But I think she is going to be released this week. A week as a character that you can buy uh with vision in need of a new home do you think we'll finally be able to see an avengers rework as far as a rework i was thinking that would happen with a black widow rework word is that got pushed back to november along with their movie so i'm not sure if that's something we're going to see right away and where would you place vision when you get iron heart strong enough to take his place so uh that is an important point it's gonna be strong enough to take his place which might not happen on her initial release it might happen later when uh, you get to farm some shards with her for her unless you get a really good red star character so two likely places a lot of people saying bkt which i think is a good place for a lot of people if you're not running that full guardian teams and running that initial bkt team uh that could be a good place for him i don't have him there so i'm not going to be placing him on my guardians team I am going to be placing him on an Avengers team. And those are the two most likely places for him. Some kind of tech team. BKT is a good variant. And then uh, another Avengers team. I think those are the two likely places for Vision. And I'm probably going to go with Avengers for mine personally. Uh, what is all this catch-up mechanics about? Been playing the game for almost two years now. I've seen nothing hinting at food, let alone anything that could go well with catch-up. So I'm thinking the reason you might not have heard of this catch-up mechanic uh is because of the quarantine there might be a limited tomato supply in your area so you haven't heard too much about the ketchup mechanics but uh trust me brother when you start to get a big influx of tomatoes you will start to hear about these ketchup mechanics uh next question valley love the content uh keep up the good work any chance you can mention to the devs about adding a confirmation box for the offer section of the game just wasted 750 cores on 75s abcs it's been mentioned to them a lot brother i for some reason they're not uh changing that maybe it's because they want people to spend cores like this i don't know i would think it'd be in their best interest to have people happy with the game instead of saying hey we got your cores but uh i don't know i hope it is something that they will change it's been much requested for over two years now brother <laughs> Valley fly and uh, do we know if there's any plans to allow us to trade in Ultimus orbs once we have capped them out? Uh, I have not heard any uh, plans of that. It's kind of annoying. I, I'm in the same boat. You are a lot of uh, characters right now at seven stars and Ultimus. I have him at seven stars, so pretty much it's just a big Inception model. Every time I pull a character in Ultron and those Ultimus orbs, I usually don't get any uh, valuable characters. So. Hopefully they will do what they have in other games where you could use the Ultimus orb fragments and buy gear or other character shards or use it to open an orb. I'm hoping that they will do that. I'm not sure what is taking them so long with uh, fixing this though. Uh, 
Valley Fly, a few different kind of questions for you. So there's a bunch of them here. Uh, do you ever feel pigeonholed with doing particular type of videos? Mailbag, Monday, Newsweek, new characters, unlocks, or does that not really bother you? Uh, sometimes I do feel pigeonholed because it's, uh, you know, on certain days that a certain video is going to come out like a Monday or a Wednesday. Like, oh, there's a good video this week, but it's the mailbag video or it's the news videos uh, released this week. So sometimes I do. Other times it helps me just to get content out uh, and putting things in perspective. Like, oh, I know I need to do this this time. So it helps me with uh, organizing content. So it's, it's, a, it's a double edged sword with that one. Does it get old having to tell people where they're from? I guess as a viewer, that information is irrelevant and sometimes annoying. But for you, sometimes it gets the idea of the vastness of your player base. I like it. I, I like seeing where everybody's from. I think, uh, you know, as, as a little guy, just uh, doing stuff in his office and talking to uh, people, it's, it's kind of interesting to see where people is from. So I, I, I like it. I, I know not everybody does because I see the comments, but I, I think it's kind of cool. Does it getting fatigued known as the guy with high energy? I could tell sometimes when it's forced and I'd much be rather seeing a genuine sometimes tired valley not meant as an insult we care as viewership so sometimes you know there's there's videos that i'm like hey what's up guys and i'm just super low energy and i see the comments like what's going on uh i don't know i think uh, once i turn on these lights energy kind of kind of comes to me whether it's whether it's like all right i gotta get up i gotta get up for this video or it's just like i'm generally genuinely happy so I'm not sure where the energy comes from because sometimes i'm real like high energy other times I'm like yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling high energy what's up guys and i'm just like that. So I don't know. I don't know. It, it's, I, I, it's not intentional being the high energy guy. I don't know. I just, with the lights on, I feel like I have to have a high energy. I don't know. Last one. Is it possible to cut down the mailbag to be closer to 30 minutes or less? Love your videos, but hour long video multiples a week is difficult to keep up with. Yes, I know. I'm trying. I'm trying. It, it started off with like a 10 question video and then it got to 20 and now we're up to like 50, 60 questions and I feel bad about leaving questions out. So I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully I can figure out a good solution to cut this video down because it's actually one of the more uh, time consuming videos of the week. I, I don't know if you guys noticed because Cena only did like two or three of these uh, mailbag videos and he stopped because these videos take a long time to make. <laughs> Next question. What is up, brother? Gyms are open here in Ohio soon. Nice. I was, uh, I keep hearing you say Fox X wants all characters to be usable. Lies, I say. Why not make all minion usable? Example. Aim, shield, hydra. Now, aim and shield, I think all of the minions are usable. Not all are going to be good. I think the community kind of decided this is the best version of that team and everybody used that same team. But there are other versions of aim and shield that work. Hydra, yeah, Hydra Grenadier kind of sucks. There's not a lot of other versions. I'm not sure why Crossbones and Winter Soldier didn't get uh, added to that faction. But uh, yeah, I, I think they do want to see them all usable. Not sure what happened to certain characters like the mentioned, the previously mentioned Grenadier or Merc Soldier, but I think at some point they do want to get all characters at least usable. At least that's what they've been saying for a long time now. Hey, brother, are you ready to compete? complete that Black Order? I will be getting him at five stars myself. Yes, six stars coming tonight, brother. Uh, love your content, Valley. Watch every video. My question is, why doesn't Green Goblin counter Red Skull? Keep up the awesome work. I am not sure. Is this, I'm not sure if this is something to do with their kits or to do with something thematically with them in comics. So I don't know. Let, let me know in the comments, guys, what you think. If this is a comic question or a kit question, because uh, it could be taken a few different ways. I'm not sure how either would work. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, my game just crashed when I entered Blitz, sent a screen mashup that resulted from an interesting button on the top left. Apparently, my game loaded a Blitz screen with an auto sim button. So let me show this. We've, we've shown this before on news videos and stuff, but this is it again. So this is apparently still in the game, guys. And as you can see, that auto sim off right in that top right hand corner. So not sure what to make of this, uh, but it looks like uh, they, they are at least thinking of auto simming for Blitz, guys. All right, Valley Flying, what do you think of a team not or having enough characters to make multiple squads like you could have two Kree teams? What teams do you think this should be done with? Uh, obviously, teams with a lot of characters that people want to make multiple versions of the teams like X-Men, like Spider-Man and his rogues galleries. Uh, Kree is a good situation. There's a lot of other teams, uh, S.H.I.E.L.D., Avengers. Uh, it'd be good. So, yeah, a lot of these uh, popular teams or popular villain factions with multiple. I I'd like to see multiple versions of multiple teams. I think it'd be very fun. Next question. Hey, man, I was going over my Star Trek and I'm curious. I'm not an end game player, but I imagine a lot of the player base is. Why aren't Foxnext doing anything with excessive 
excess Stark tech we get? Were there suggestions on what to do with it? So I don't know if there were suggestions, but it was suggested in the data mine, which again, take it with a grain of salt because it is a data mine, but it was suggested that there would be room bonuses added to war. So I don't know if that plan got scrapped or that's just something that Fox Nix is still planning to do. But I think it was speculated by a lot of the community that when they do add these bonuses or if they add these bonuses, that the cost for upgrading these bonuses would be from Stark Tech. So I know even before this additional silver promotion credit, my alliance was still donating every single day. Uh, so we'll see what happens with it. But I think I think uh, the initial plan was Stark Tech. Uh, for Stark Tech was those room bonuses. Not sure what they're going to do now because there's going to be some alliances that have been hoarding that stuff for a while. So you're going to see some huge bonuses. But we'll, we'll see what happens. Not sure what they're going to do at this point. Uh, what is up from Central PA and excited to unlock Ma tonight. Where does he fit for U7 and with what team? So not sure if he really fits into that U7 team, unfortunately. A uh, couple things with him. I think uh, his best benefit is going to be with that Black Order team. Not sure if that's a good team for raid especially ultima 7 and if you look at ma he's got some pretty big cooldowns on his special and his ultimate the ultimate is where you're going to get that sustainability for the raid so unless you're pairing him with someone that's going to give him some energy maybe a normal thanos or something where you get a lot of kills uh, I, don't, I don't see him having a lot of value now a lot of this is just based on how his kit looks on paper maybe he comes out he's an ultimate raid character but uh, as of right now, just looking at him as on paper, I don't see him as a big threat in Ultima 7. As far as his team, I, I think I'm going to go with Cookie Cutter right now until I can try him out and go with Black Order for his team. Uh, what uh, the question is, what could a full Black Order team do? Or the question is, could a full Black Order team do well in Ultima 7? Uh, where would you place them on Alliance War? Uh, possibly in one note in Ultima 7. I'm not sure if they're designed to be that raid team, though. And second question, where would I place them on an alliance war? Uh, they're going to have to go on uh, uh, on uh, offense tonight because he is coming out. We don't have time to switch him in the rooms. We don't have time to place him on defense. So at least for tonight, he's going to be on offense. I'll see how he does at that point. Maybe there'll be a defensive squad. But yeah, at least, at least initially, they're going to be an offensive squad. Uh, happy Memorial Day, brother. Happy Memorial Day to you as well. Uh, with the full black order upon us now, would you consider... Thanos, one of those to get the six red star promotions. Uh, it is possible. I would like to see him uh, live before just uh, looking at it on paper before I recommend it. But uh, if if you were saving up for a six star Thanos, uh, I was always telling people to wait for Ma. Ma is going to be here in a few hours. So now might be the time that you want to do it. But I'm not recommending it at this point until I see you know firsthand what he does what's up from wales clearly everyone is fed up with blitz bots stopping people from hitting their mark when do you think they're all going to get banned because it's what they need to do fox next can clearly track them uh, i'm not sure about that but hopefully they do get banned soon i know it's something that fox next is looking into last i heard is the active discussion that they want to uh, come up with a solution for so we'll see what happens but uh, hopefully it is sooner than later. Blitz spotting is not fun. Macros are not fun. They're not within the spirit of the game, in my opinion. So the sooner Fox X can announce this, the better. Uh, next question. Valley Fine, keep up the great work. Thank you, brother. Struggling to stay in the top 100 in arena. My defense is comparable to others. I've tried a few other options, but I know no defense can hold. Is it worth pushing cores every day to get a better rank? and better rewards uh it can be potentially depending how much you're going to shoot up you got to look at the rewards where reward you're going to get if you don't use cores what reward you'll get if you use the cores so you're gonna have to make that determination for yourself depending where you are in arena right now uh i found that the defense is not necessarily about the team it's more about the timing of your attacks so like for myself my arena payout currently is at 11 o'clock so if i look at it like seven eight o'clock nine o'clock i'll start looking at where i'm at at an arena I'll start hitting based on that uh and looking at where i want to end up so if i want to end up in a top 10 i know by like 10 o'clock like an hour before my arena's payout time is i need to be at around 12 or so and then i could start working my way up at that point but uh, having a good plan i think is more important than having a good uh, defensive squad uh obviously you know not that doesn't hold the true for every single situation but i think having a plan is very very important uh bro hey bro greetings from north carolina currently saving all resources for ma i've put a lot of other resources in the black order uh do you think taking all the black order to gear 14 for dark dimension 3 
Uh, I think it can be a good plan if you already have your uh, global and your city nodes done. You could put all these cosmic characters up to gear 14. But keep in mind that it's not just one team that you need for Dark Dimension 3. You need a few different versions. Global characters, cosmic characters, city characters. So if you have that done, it can be a good idea. But if you don't, uh, just make sure you have a plan for those other nodes before you just take one full team that's only going to hit one uh, one trait for you, that cosmic trait. Hey, Valley Flying, how you doing, brother? Greetings from Brazil again. My question today is about Dark Dimension 3. Which skill hero do you recommend to bring to T14 for Dark Dimension 3? We already have Phoenix, Black Bolt, Scientist Supreme, Finishing up Hella, and Cyclops. Uh, all right, so skill characters, couple different options there. If you're needing someone for the global node, Nick Fury is a pretty good option there. Uh, he gets defense up. He calls some minions, so that's pretty good. You have a few different options on that cosmic node. You could go Black Order. I managed to do Proxima, working on Corvus right now. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, Sif is another good choice for that cosmic node. And if you're thinking about the city node, skill, Punisher doesn't take a lot of mini unique, so he's a good option there. So I would go with one of those characters, depending on which, which trait, uh, which origin trait you need to work on. Hello, my friend. So what are your thoughts on Shuri for Dark Dimension 3? Not for her heals, but for her defense ups. So she does do some real good defense ups. They could be the key for Phoenix. But personally, this is not a character that I'm going to build for Dark Dimension 3. Now, I might take it to gear 14 for Ultima 7 for some other game modes, but not specifically for this game mode because she will get those defense ups. She can do the healing, but probably not going to be doing multiple heals per Dark Dimension battle because the enemies have so much health. They do so much damage. For, so for this game mode, unless you have a big, huge abundance of these orange ability mats, uh, not the orange ability mats, the orange gear, I probably would save the gear and use it for different characters. But if you have a lot and it doesn't really matter, yeah, take her up, take her up. She'll help you a little bit. But the question is, is she going to help you more than some other characters that you could take up with that orange gear? That's that's going to be your more uh, valuable question, brother. Greetings from Michigan, not underwater. That is good, brother. I'll be getting Ma on his first pass. Congratulations on that one. I was wondering if you noticed a 25% limitation on his ultimates. My question is, so do you know if it does the full 15% damage and you only receive the limited health or does it do the limited damage? So it does the full 15 damage if your Maw has enough health. This was put into the game to kind of con control Minerva going into Dark Dimension 2. You could go into the very weak Minerva and do this crazy flat 15% damage no matter how low your Minerva is. Kind of stop that with Phoenix. Kind of stop that with Maw. So if your Maw is very, very weak, you're not going to be doing that full 15% of damage with that T4 and his uh, ultimate ability. But if he's strong... You should have no trouble getting past that 25% limitation from his own health. So build them up and you shouldn't notice it, uh, at least the way that I am reading this skill, brother. Uh, next question is, greeting from Norway. Hope you're staying safe. Same to you, brother. Do you know if Foxing Scopely will have any plans for adding some sort of raid logging in the future? Like in Alliance War, we could go ahead and see the performance of all your Alliance members in the previous war. Uh, not sure if they're going to do that. I'm not sure if there's a huge enough outcry for this. I get what you're saying here. It's kind of uh, easy to go back in as a leader in your Alliance and look at where people are as far as raiding their scores. But I'm not sure if this is a big, big outcry that the community has had. So I'm not sure... This is a place that Fox is going to devote a lot of their resources. But I agree. This would be very, very uh, convenient, especially for uh, people that are in charge of the Alliance. Next question. What is up, my man? I know it's said somewhere, but what T4s are required on Supernatural to counter merch? If you don't have them, how much of a big punch down do you need to do? So I'm not sure about the punch down because I had the T4s in the merch before they even came out but uh the the passives that are important or the the t4s that are important mortal special mortal passive uh dr strange his passive now i also have his ultimate i think that is a good one as well uh but not necessary and then ghost riders passive i think those are the four that are most important on the team and then five if you include that dr strange uh ultimate as well uh valley fine hope you're well what t4s do you recommend for yo yo uh, her basic and her passive brother Next question. What's up, brother? Greetings from Singapore. I have a question for you, bro. With Fox Snakes releasing Alliance War defense team like Marauders, Asgardian, Hydra, Mercs, what do you think of the recommended level and gear to bring each, uh, to, to build each of these teams? Uh, that's really going to depend on where you are and your alliance. Uh, you probably be want to be around where your alliance is. So I would check with your elite uh, alliance leaders, some of the leadership in your alliance, and ask them where 
uh, you should be bringing your teams to because this 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 is a very wide question. You know, some per, some people's alliance 150 might just be killing it as far as the collection power, but another person's alliance, you need to get that uh, defense team up to like 400 to even make a difference. So it's gonna be dependent. So talk to your uh, alliance leadership. Next question: Do you think it's time we get a new war offense team because we keep getting war defense team which are not fun because you don't get to see what they do? I agree, they're not fun. I don't like them. I was opposed to this when I first heard this from the devs, and we've gotten a bunch since then. So yeah, we definitely need more war offense. I don't like war defense teams. Uh, happy Memorial Day to you and yours. Same to you, brother. Uh, question, do you think Fox Next would ever implement a feature to see which alliances can challenge each other's, let's say for maybe a season and war? I would like that. It would be, it would be good for planning purposes. You know, you're planning certain matchups. Oh, I could go easy this day, go hard this day. Uh, but that may be the very reason that they're not implementing something like this. So you can kind of save our resources. Valley, thanks for the great content. My alliance has made gold three twice in the last couple of weeks. Congratulations on that, brother. Is there a certain strategy for gold three? As in, do we put like eight to 10 people on full defense, rest on offense? What's the common setup for war defense in the higher tiers? So I, I know what I do. There's, there's eight teams that I put on. We got five meta teams. There's three teams that I rounded out with the Captain Marvel, Wakandans, and the uh, defenders and then we got those meta teams there that's what i do on defense the rest goes for offense now pretty you got to think about it this way for war you got eight teams that you have on defense you have about 10 teams that you need on offense that means you need 18 teams for war the rest is just uh i, I don't know what you're going to use them for because you don't really need multiple teams in other game modes outside of blitz so once you got those 18 teams you should be solid but start planning them out the five meta teams the three other teams and then use the rest on offense brother that's that's what we do but obviously everything is different based on whatever your alliance is so uh, every alliance is different a a meta team at 250 might be awesome for some alliances but at 450 might be too weak for other alliances so you gotta see where your alliance is brother this is a very open-ended question but hopefully that helps greetings from steelers country to be fair this is everywhere i don't know about that brother raiders baby Anyway, new characters of Spider-Verse and Mutant, as in both tags on one character or characters. Option one, Spider-Man and his amazing friends, Firestar, Iceman. Option two, Cloak and Dagger. Uh, so I guess this is about the rumor that Drew shared a few weeks ago. So the way I understand it is that it's supposed to be the Mutant characters, X-Men characters, and then Spider-Verse. But uh I don't, I don't think they're going to be characters with Spider-Verse and Mutant Tags, at least from what I am uh, understanding of this. Uh, greetings from Sydney, Australia. Quick questions. Do you think Deadpool will get his white outfit with the upcoming X-Force release characters? And or could he be met and have both outfits depending on whether he's used to an X-Force team? I, I would like that. The, you know, his outfit switches based on what team you use him in. That would be pretty cool. But I don't know if you remember about two years ago, they were toying with the idea of skins. Deadpool, all of a sudden, instead of his red outfit, had a white outfit in the game. And then about a month or two later, it just got uh, pushed back. So all this uh, white outfit did was have cosmetic value. And I would be I would be open to that if they did skins with just cosmetic value. Things like that Deadpool white outfit, maybe some other outfits. I think it'd be cool. So uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, they definitely could do that. Do you recall when the third symbiote Spider-Man milestone event is likely to happen? I don't, I did not give a date, but they did say it's coming back three times. So hopefully it is uh, sometime within the next few weeks. My next question, greetings from my a new Alliance World Task Force. Keep smashing it. Has anybody told you you look a lot like Drew the Rumor Guy? No, I have not heard that. Uh, Drew, what, do you think I look like you? Ah, uh, Valley, I don't see the resemblance at all, mate. I think the blog's got a few kangaroos loose in the top padlock. I drew the rumor guy here, and I've got a hot one for you today, Valley. This time, I'm expanding on a rumor from a couple of weeks ago. July, X-Men, male. Hmm, so you're saying it's a male X-Men character on the dock end, huh? Interesting. Eliminates about half of the options there, but we still got Beast, Iceman, Gambit, Nightcrawler. So many good options. There's a bunch of others out there. Come on, Drew. Which X-Men character is it going to be? There's still a lot of options, brother. Patience, Valley. You will find out in good time, mate. But hey, the evening is gorgeous, so it is time for a night out on the piss, mate. Ask, but don't worry. I will be back. All right, well, Drew, I was never a guy to stand in the way of a good party, so you go have your fun. But hopefully you'll be back very soon. 
So give us some clarity on who this new X-Men character is. My head is going in a lot of different directions right now, but guys, let me know your thoughts. Who do you think this new male X-Men character is? Let me know your predictions in the comments. And before you go, I want to thank each and every one of you that left a question on the Discord server in the mailbag channel, whether it got answered or not. I want to thank you guys for taking the time and leaving that question. Now, if you want to leave a question for a future episode to potentially get featured in one, uh, make sure you join the Discord. The link is down below. There's some other links down below as well that support the channel. Blue Stacks, Patreon, there's some other stuff, guys. And if you like this video, hopefully you liked it. Subscribe to the channel. Smash on that notification bell, guys. Make sure you click on that share button. Share this video with all of your friends. Uh, at least four Marvel Strike Force videos per week on this channel. So, yes, make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified every time a new video comes up. Check me out on social media and give me a Hulk fist bump before you go, baby. Valley Flano.